Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my knitting podcast. I'm Suni, the maker behind Ipa Knits here on YouTube, also available on Instagram and Ravelry with the same username. And we are on to episode 3. I know it's been a little bit longer than I was initially planning on uploading. I think I said in the first episode that I wanted to upload kind of at the end or very beginning of each month, so that way I could kind of do like a monthly overview. Um, yeah, life happened. It's a little bit later. So I'm not sure if I want to keep going with that original plan or if I want to instead keep it to like a first Saturday of the month sort of situation. We'll see. Um, I guess you'll find out by the next episode or the next few. So I will go ahead and get started. If you're like me, you're probably already working or whatever it is you want to work on while you listen or watch this. So I will give a little reminder though, make sure that you have something to drink nearby so you can stay a little bit hydrated. I do imagine this will be a little bit of a rambling one, so get some fluids in your body. Okay, so I wanted to touch on a few things before I get into the knitting portion of this. I know that's probably not what you're here for, but I want to mention it anyways, and I pr really hope that you would not skip through it. Um, and you'll kind of get why. So I recently discovered Isabella, who is the girly dinosaur on YouTube, and she has a knitting podcast called the Flirty Fiber Knitting Podcast. I believe she released the third episode two days ago, as of when I'm filming this, and some stuff that she's mentioned and she's made a point to bring up in her videos, and I think I want to also put a focus on just in my content, the stuff I make and the stuff I prioritize, prioritize and the just anything that I knit and create in general is about inclusivity, particularly pertaining towards size and body inclusivity. So I think that's something I'm somewhat aware of. I don't think I'm the best, I'm not an expert by any means, but it is something that I want to, moving forward, put more of an emphasis that I do care about it and I want to make sure that you all know that this is a open, big space for anyone. It's not exclusive by any means, whether it's by body standards, race, age, anything like that. Um, obviously, I am a young person of color knitting, um, so I just want to make that clear. So moving forward, I'm going to try and make sure that for all the patterns that I mentioned that they are size inclusive, and I will list out the sizes that the pattern range provides, and so the minimum and maximum generally bust size. I think that's kind of the typical measurement that a pattern will give. They might give, say, things like torso length or sleeve length, especially for like sweaters and upper body garments, but I think those can be down to personal preference and not necessarily a pattern thing, so I'll just mention the bust sizes. And also, at the beginning of every video from now on, I'm going to make sure to include whatever measurements of myself that I think would be relevant to the patterns I include. So today I'm going over a couple of upper body garments and sweaters and things like that. So I'll be mentioning really quick all of my sort of measurements that will hopefully give you a better idea of how things will fit on me and then based off your own measurements, how they might fit on you. So I'm going to put in a little picture, maybe this side, yeah, um, and I'll really quickly say them in inches and centimeters. So my height is 5'2 or 158 centimeters. My bust is 33 inches or 84 centimeters. Waist, 30 inches, 76 centimeters. Hips, 37.5 inches, 95 centimeters. Shoulders, 16 inches, 41 centimeters. Torso length, 15 inches, 38 centimeters. Arm length, 20.5 inches, 52 centimeters. Bicep circumference, circumference 10.5 inches, 26 centimeters. And wrist circumference, 6 inches or 14 centimeters. And so all those should be, I think, very close to as accurate as possible. I will say, I think maybe shoulders and torso length might be a little bit off. Um, just because I did measure myself, and when it's just you on the tape measure, there's only so accurate you can get. But I really don't think it would be more than maybe an inch or so off in either direction. So I think they're pretty reliable measurements. And yeah, I hope that helps. If there's any measurements or any part that is confusing or you would like me to clarify on, feel free to either leave a comment or DM me on Instagram. I'd be happy to help in any way that I can. So that's all for the housekeeping kind of administrative stuff. And 
Oh yes, one last thing, <laughs> really quick. A little bit of different setup. So I'm hopefully when I'm looking at my notes, it's now down here below my camera. So it won't be as far away when I'm like looking at things. It won't be as, I don't know, separate like it was before. And sound should be better quality and also synced up properly because I'm going to be editing on my laptop instead of on my phone. I think my phone was working, but I'm just used to editing on the laptop. And since I do have the storage space to do so, I'm going to. And this way, I can also now include some fancy b-roll for all of the patterns and things that I mentioned. So that's all, and now we will get into the actual knitting content. So, you might be able to see, I am wearing my finished Lacey Days cardigan. So I mentioned this last episode, this is a cardigan by Lucy, who is Lucy Handstitched over on Instagram. It is a pretty simple lace cardigan. It is, I haven't, I finished it and connected everything yesterday night, so I haven't blocked it yet, but I just really wanted to wear it. So it's a full sleeve length cardigan and with this really pretty kind of curved detail for the um, side hem, front panels, I'm not sure, but I really love it. Like I said, I finished it yesterday night in a frenzy. I just really wanted to get it done, sped through it. It's done. I'm so excited to wear it. And actually, if I, I am wearing it over top a um, long sleeve turtleneck, it's just actually pretty warm as it is. I tried also wearing it just by itself. Like I believe Lucy was wearing it in the sample pictures that she posted over on her Instagram. I love it. I don't know, it's great. I think you can wear it in a lot of different ways and I'm really excited to keep wearing it for many years to come. So the pattern itself has 10 sizes listed 1 through 10. So it's made for bust measurements of 26 to 30 inches or 66 to 76 centimeters to 62 or 66 inches or 157 to 168 centimeters. And the finished garment itself will provide a bust size of 34 to 8 or 86 centimeters to 70 inches or 178 centimeters. And I knit this in a size 2. Uh, I used 3.5 and 3.25 millimeter needles for this. And the yarn I used was Baraka Remix Light in the 6960 strawberry colorway. And I, I just, I love this. I am a little, I was a little worried about the yarn. I believe I mentioned last time because it has these little like things mix into the yarn. I'm not sure what it is or if it shows up. Yeah, you can kind of see it, but I worried a little bit that it kind of took away from the lace pattern, and I think it does to some extent, but I don't think it's that bad. And I just really like how it turned out. I posted on my Instagram also a picture of me wearing it before I'd finished the sleeves, or at least before I'd attached any of the sleeves, and I actually really like how it looked also just kind of like as a vest, so I might want to make another one just like that. And then it's less work. I think I measured, or I weighed it, that piece, and it was only 100 grams, which I think is pretty good. So then if it's like a fingering weight, 100 grams, I can just use a single skein if it's 100 gram skein, which is fantastic. Um, and also one final note for it, modifications. Because this was a test knit, I tried to not do any note, uh, modifications that I could help. And I know normally I do mention that I will do half twisted ribbing for any ribbing. So normally on like the cuffs and then here I would have done half twisted ribbing. But I decided not to mainly because the yarn that I used wasn't very elastic. And I wanted to make sure that the sleeves could stretch as much as that they needed to. So I decided to do just regular standard ribbing this time. And then my next recently finished object is my other test that I mentioned last episode, the Ramage Pullover. And this is a test design by a designer whose name I'm not sure how to pronounce again. I'm sorry. I just don't know. Um, and the size range for this, there are 12 sizes, 1 through 12, and it provides a finished bust measurement of 83.5 centimeters to 166 point or just 166 centimeters and she does recommend 13 in or 13 centimeters minimum of positive ease so i also knit this one in a size 2 i used sophia cashmere 
in the 6 and 19 colorways. So 6 for the main body and then 19 for the contrast color. I really love the yoke and especially this sort of chevron detail that goes across. It's done with holding the contrast color double, which I'd never done before, and you kind of like weave it in and out throughout as you're knitting the yoke. It's my first time doing it, I really like how it turned out, and it's, it's really pretty. I also did mention last time that I had to buy extra of the main color yarn online, so it ended up being a different dye lot, which <laughs> it is visible. Um, you can see here the line across where I added the new ball of yarn, and then also for the sleeve, even just technically white right where I started the sleeve and also next to the body. It's not too bad, but it is definitely visible. Um, but I do love the yarn. It's super squishy. I generally don't work with chunky yarn, at least not for garments. I just don't like kind of how it tends to fit on me depending on usually what the sweater is, but or any sort of garment. If it's made chunky yarn, I don't like how it fits. I feel like it um, gives a bit of a Michelin man look sometimes. So I try to avoid it, but this I didn't mind, and it wasn't, I think, super chunky that it looked super thick. It was just like squishy comfortable. And it's just so soft, which I really love. But I will say that for whatever reason, when I knit this, and it was just me, I'm pretty sure the other testers were fine and theirs turned out the way it was supposed to, I got gauge knitting in the round, which is how the designer said that they did gauge as well. and. I'm pretty sure it was like spot on a size 2, or at least very close to it, and for some reason, and you might have seen on my Instagram, or you might have just been able to tell when I held it up, this ended up pretty small. For a garment that's supposed to have at least 13 centimeters of positive ease, this is very fitted on me. Um, so yeah, I'm really not sure why that happened if my gauge was accurate and I was picking the right size. Maybe I didn't pick the right size? I'm not sure. but. I, mean, I still like it, it's still super comfortable to wear, and I do love the design, but I'm not sure how I like it wearing it. I might frog it, and maybe one day try and redo this, or just use the yarn for a different project, but I love the pattern, I love the yarn, I just, I'm not a fan of how it turned out when I made it, but it's okay, because it is still super squishy, super comfortable, super warm. So you can buy the pattern for that through Ravelry or Payship. Pay. I'll put all the links for everything down below, but it is nine euros or nine dollars twenty four cents USD, and the pattern released last Wednesday, so exactly a week before today, as of when I am filming this. Um, it's a great pattern. I would definitely recommend it. And the designer also has some other patterns available if you want, if you like the style and aesthetic, and you want to check out some more of that. And that is all for finished objects. Now on to works in progress. So there is technically, I guess, two main things actively on my needles, maybe two and a half. So one of them is something that I casted on, I think a few days ago, worked on for maybe half of a day and then not even half a day. Well, I guess on and off for maybe a quarter of a day. I'm not sure if you'll see any progress on this by next episode, but I figured I should it anyways because I would like to get it done sometime because I think it is sort of autumnal because of the sort of like mustardy color. So these are the house socks by Pearl Soho and there are three sizes, small, medium, large, and it's just a super cute, pretty simple sock pattern where there's twist half twisted ribbing on the top half of the foot and it leads into these really pretty sort of cable-esque pattern details on the top of the foot or top of the heel sorry and so yeah i'm knitting this with cascade heritage sock in the colorway golden yellow and i used the same sock yarn in a different colorway for the heart socks that i think i mentioned in the first podcast episode um the heart socks was a test knit that I did for Socks by Kim. So I really like this. I love the pattern. If you use Google Chrome, 
then you know how since they steal your data and everything they when you open a new tab they recommend different articles for you based off of all the websites and things that you've clicked on and you know looked at they recommended Pearl Soho's blog post I think for this pattern so I saw it I thought it was super pretty and I checked it out and I really wanted to use this yarn for something it is a sock yarn and my younger sister loves the color yellow but she's not a huge sock person let alone a knitted sock person so I was like okay I'll make these for myself then and I got I think maybe one or two stitches off from gauge using 2.75 millimeter needles but I think it just the fabric it made was way too gappy and loose for what I wanted especially for sock that I wanted to wear in autumn and maybe winter but at the very least year round year round definitely in autumn I wanted to keep my feet warm so I sized down needles to 2.25 um, and I like the fabric a lot better it's what I wanted but knitting a size medium which is what I was knitting and technically what my foot measurement should make me make it was way too small so for some reason it didn't occur to me to knit a size large I think that was too much math to figure out if that would be a good idea I don't know but I what I ended up doing was at the end of the increase that you do for the toe and this is a free pattern so I'm gonna go as in depth as I can um, you do a set number of increases for your size and then after that I decided to do two more sets of increases so or three more sets of increases sorry yes three more sets of increases and I also made them a little bit more evenly spread out or not evenly spread out so normally it's one row and then increase and then one row straight one increase I did two straight and then one increase two straight one increase and then after that it was at a good length it was at a good width and now I'm on to the actual foot section which is half twisted ribbing on the top and then just regular stockinette stitch on the bottom and I decided I'm doing an odd number of extra increases because if you look at the pattern for the heel section the cables that it creates it's the little like sort of what are they like tree branches kind of looking things in between each of them there is one stitch I believe a pearl stitch so my logic was if I add one more increase that'd be one stitch because it's it would be four in the sets of increase you do one two three four basically one in each needle and then either make one right make one left based off of which needle it's on and where it is in the foot so and it seemed like there were four repeats of that sort of cable tree looking pattern which would line up with each of those so in but it would kind of line up like one pattern is here and then this space and then one pattern is there and so on all the way around so in that space in between would be a pearl stitch so my logic was if I do one extra maybe this doesn't make sense actually no that will work because I'll just do the pearl stitches for the increases and then the regular stitch that's supposed to be a pearl will be a knit stitch but that is all for that and then final whip is barely started it's the wrap me up top by Phoebe or Mocha Sheep Designs over on Instagram this is a test knit there will be 10 sizes 1 through 10 I'm knitting a size 2 the finished garment should produce something that is 30 inches or 76 centimeters ranging to 59 inches or 150 centimeters she did mention that if you're smaller than a size one it st should still fit you and then generally that you should size up because of the way that the garment sort of hauls the top I guess that way it kind of like covers more of your chest it's better to size up than size down and I am knitting it with along with like Anna double merino in the royal colorway which is leftovers that I had from um, knitting the step-by-step -step sweater by Florence Miller that I mentioned in the last episode. Now on to acquisitions. So I bought two different types of yarn from Aro, Aro Knits and Pearls on Instagram. She has an, a D-stash account, Aro D-stashes, and I bought two different yarns from her. So I got a single skein of Farmer's Starter Fibers, in, which is squish fingering, 100% superwash merino, and it is the girl on Webster Street colorway. And so it's a really pretty sort of off-white with 
little bits of purple and blue speckling. For the most part, it is very much that sort of uh, creamy off-white. But yes, it's very pretty, and the blue and purple can be pretty saturated in some spots, which I think is really pretty. And I'm excited to see how it'll look on a total garment. I'm curious now, after realizing and doing the math, that the just the vest of this cardigan only takes 100 grams. Should I use this for that? I don't know. I'm considering it. I'm also not sure what else I would use 100 grams of fingering weight yarn for because I think I mentioned before, I don't use fingering weight that often. I usually go for worsted or somewhere around there. But we'll see. I'll be considering that at the very least. And then the second thing I got from her is a sweater's quantity of Knox yarn. And I didn't realize until I looked um, the dyer up, but she no longer dyes yarn. So this is impossible to get any more of unless you find it from a D stash. So this is in the Flora sock base, and it's the Glory and the Dream colorway. And it's 20% kid mohair, 55% superwash merino, and 25% nylon. So 100 grams and 435 yards. And this is quantity amount, so three skeins of this. And this is also, I realized when I they both came in, how sort of similar they are in terms of like the vibes and specific colors. But so this one is also sort of an off-white um, main color with purple, pink, and some like mauve. And it's not as much speckling as it is sort of like a subtle gradation and color throughout all of it. So I think it's also really pretty. I'm not entirely sure what I want to make with this, but right now I'm planning on, I believe it's called the Ballerina Wrap Top by Two of Wands. It's a free pattern through her blog, or you can also purchase it as well. I really like that pattern. I would like to make a long sleeve version. And typically I think the pattern calls for a worsted or Erin weight, but I have seen when going through the Ravelry projects that are under that pattern, there are some people who have made a long sleeve version too with fingering weight yarn. So I have hope and I will probably be looking at those patterns very closely for guidance when I want to try and make something with this yarn. I will link those projects down below as well in case you are also curious. Next yarn item I bought is technically something I only purchased and has not arrived and will not arrive I think for quite a bit of time because it was a yarn uh, pre-order. So I recently, somewhat recently discovered Erin who is Coast to Coast Yarn Co on Instagram and she has a knitting podcast or just kind of making podcast, I don't know, here on YouTube called the Woolen Paper Podcast. It's really great. I highly recommend, especially if you are into um, books, reading. She talks about books and stuff that she's been reading recently alongside of what sort of project she's been making, the yarn she's been dyeing, all of that. I think it's great. And so she recently came out with her Book Tropes collection, which is a series of different colorways inspired by different book tropes. So a lot of them have super cute names, um, and they're all just beautiful colors. But two of them especially I like fell in love with at first sight, and another one I just couldn't resist also adding on to my cart. So I bought three skates total, one of each different colorway. Two of the first two will be natural DK non superwash, and then the last one I got a natural in the natural worsted non superwash base. So the natural DKs I got in Fall from Grace and Second Chance Romance, and then the natural worsted I got in the Enemies to Lovers colorway. So the first two were well, the ones I fell in love with at first sight. I just love the contrast and the colors that they use, and how it's, it's so beautiful. And then Enemies to Lovers is just such a rich color, it looks like. And I don't really have much of like a purple sort of in my in my stash or that I've worked with really ever. If I have worked with purple, it's usually a lot lighter, like kind of a lilac or lavender. Definitely not like this. So I'm really excited to work with it. And the, the name is just, I couldn't pass it up. It's right up my alley. So I'm very excited for that. The pre-order was actually extended longer than she expected, which is good because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to buy it, I don't think. I told myself I would only buy it after, or I'd only consider buying it after, um, basically I had a stressful phone call 
uh, for work stuff, and that got way later than expected, but thankfully her pre-order was still open, so once the call was over and I was able to like, calm down for a few minutes, I bought the yarn. So it was a little treat. A little treat. And then final thing for acquisitions is technically not overtly yarn or craft related, but I made it so. Um, my Skizu order came in, which I, it was a pre-order and I bought it months ago, maybe May, June, I'm not sure, but it came in a couple weeks ago, maybe a week ago, time is, who knows what it is. So I bought two desk trash bins, yes, and then one Skizu, an actual doll. So let me go grab the doll real quick, he's on my bed. So <laughs> this is the Skizu doll. So. What I was thinking, and how this is somehow yarn related, is I want to make him little outfits. I want to make him things to wear. I think head hat stuff might be a little tricky because of how massive his head is and his ears, but I think it would be really cute. And I would like to make him little shirts and sweaters and stuff like that. Maybe like overalls too, if I could manage it. I have seen some patterns in Ravelry, so I'm going to be looking more into that. And his proportions are very strange, <laughs> um, with such a massive head and small body and pretty flimsy limbs. So I'm not sure how that'll go, but I'm definitely going to be making him something. And my sister actually suggested the idea of making matching sweaters with him, <laughs> which I'm obsessed with and I can't get it out of my head now. Because also I realized it would be a good way to use up like scrap yarn from a sweater project especially. I think I could make him something to go with me, so. Twinning. Um, but at the same time, I'm mentioning this now, but I don't know if any of you are actually interested or really want to see like the stuff I make for him. I know it's very different from like typical knitting content. While it is still knitting, the vibes are very different. If you want to see the patterns I make for him and what I end up choosing all that, let me know and I'll include it whenever I make stuff for him, but if not, I'll probably just keep it posted on Instagram, and if I use a Ravelry pattern, then on Ravelry as well. You know what, we'll keep it. Okay, and the second part, the two dusk trash bins. So, I got in two different versions, or two different character versions. So I have Dwicky, Leave It. So you can improve this hoe with Leave It, and you might have seen earlier in the video when I was talking about the half socks by Pearl Soho. I've been using them kind of as a yarn bowl and sometimes project bag because I don't have any project bags and I don't think they're really for me, but at the same time, I'm kind of seeing the appeal now that I'm using these sort of as a project bag. So at the very least, what I like to do is I put the skein of a working yarn that I'm using in here. And that way I can keep pulling on it and it acts like a yarn bowl. And it'll keep the whole skein from rolling around and falling to my floor, falling off my desk, stuff like that, which I think is very nice. And another thing that's great is that when there's sort of a very small amount left on the yarn ball, and normally when you pull on it, it kind of like, it can jump around and it's just, it's a hassle. If I close it just a little bit, I can still pull the yarn out, but it'll stop the ball from jumping out of the little head, mouth, I don't know. So I think it's great. And then for small projects like these socks, when I'm not working on them, I can just kind of put it in there. And if I really wanted to, I could like actually make it so that these needles can go all the way in, but this one's going to be keeping it open, it's fine. But yes, I think it's great. Um, and yeah, it's really handy. Not, again, a knitting product, but you use what you have. Anyways, so that's all for acquisitions. And now, before I move on any further, I would like to ask any family members that are watching to please either close out of the video or skip to the outro, which will be timestamped down below. This is spoilers. I don't want you to see any of this. It's supposed to be a surprise. Do not watch. I will give you a few seconds to do that. And everyone else, please wait. Okay. They all 
should be gone. I have a lot of birthday and Christmas presents that I need to start working on. The first one that is closest is my mom's birthday. So I had everyone in my family, well, I'm trying to get my dad to do it too. He's, he's like, oh, I'm fine with whatever. No, he needs to pick something. So I had made a Google form that basically went through a bunch of the different criteria that I wanted them to give their opinions on what they wanted for a handmade gift. So there are things like color or color palette. Um, do they care what kind of like material it is or like how soft it is? What actual item do they want? Do they want like more like a vest? Do they want a scarf? Do they prefer socks? Stuff like that. Um, just a pretty extensive Google form for that. And based off that, but also mainly based off just like what my mom herself has told me and after she's like felt my yarns and felt some of the stuff I've made, what she wants, I will be making her a sort of short sleeve, high collar mohair sweater. So she's shown me a few things in her closet that she really likes the fit and style of, and it's kind of like a t-shirt style. I'll need to double check. Um, but she also really liked the Alanga Vec on a silk mohair that I have in stash. I believe I mentioned it before in the first episode that I'm, I started to make a very essential pullover with that yarn held double and my mom really liked the feeling of it and she doesn't mind the shedding so I will be making something with that and she wants a short sleeve she wants a somewhat high collar I tried looking for patterns in Ravelry and I didn't find anything that was made typically recommending mohair so I might just have to find a sweater and that fits that in general what I want and then try and see if anyone's made project versions of it that use mohair, kind of see what to go from there. I'd rather not kind of self-draft a pattern for mohair because ripping it out if I make any mistakes would be horrendous. But you gotta do what you gotta do. We'll see. And then for Christmas presents, I mentioned last time that I was planning on doing a raglan pullover for everyone, the step-by-step -step sweater, so then we could all kind of match, which I I still think it's really cute, but the problem is, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, if you've knitted for, if you've knitted top-down raglan sweaters that are at the very least meant for women, maybe might be unisex, how they fit on male bodies. Let me know. Because I'm not sure if the rate of increases would be enough to fit my dad, because he has broader shoulders, even if... I do according to the bus size measurements for his chest, if it would actually increase fast enough for the shoulders. I'm not sure. I, I'm i a little iffy on it, and I don't think it'll work. So I'm temporarily scrapping the idea, and worst case I can just make him a sweater for some other time. But my idea now is, based off of what everyone said in the Google form, I can make them things for their birthdays or whatever based off um, if they want like a sweater or something. But for Christmas, what I wanted to do is make everyone a somewhat, at least one smaller item using a yarn that is indie dyed and with the specific color that I think they would really appreciate. Because here's the thing, and I know people, I've heard of this before, I know there's a bunch of dyes that make colorways and um, colorway collections based off of different media. So like I've seen some based off of like Stranger Things, Star Wars, um, Lord of the Rings, stuff like that. <sighs> I didn't realize, I should have realized, it's very popular, not very popular, but popular enough that people have made colorways based off of The Princess Pride, which my entire family loves, but my dad and younger sister especially, they adore it. We all like it. We all have watched it as a family. It's just, it's great. So I'm going to be picking a specific colorway from a different, from a yarn dyer that will match what each family member wants color-wise and also I think would have a name that they would really find cute. So I will briefly mention three different dyers that I've seen do this after brief Etsy, Instagram, Google search. So there's Retold Yarns on Etsy, Toad Hollow, and Goosey Fibers. Those are three that I found that have multiple Princess Bride colorways. Um, 
I'm going to mention a few of the names I found because they're really cute and there's some overlap. Like I think there's multiple of a few of these, but they are different colors or color palettes, which I find kind of interesting. And so I'll pick kind of what I think will meet Evelyn's personal preference. So there's Have Fun Storming the Castle, Oh Yes, In the Pit of Despair, As You Wish, I'm Not Really Left-Handed, Iocane Powder, Inconceivable, Bonds of Love, Florin, and Mostly Dead. And there's more than that. It's, it's incredible. I was very, very happy to find that out. Um, but yes, I'm going to make at least one small-ish project for everyone with one skein of yarn, hopefully. So maybe like a hat, scarf, gloves, socks, based off of what they filled out in the Google form. That is my plan. But test it's our first priority, and then also my mom's birthday gift, because since I don't have a pattern in mind for that, I'm pretty stuck. Let me know if you have any recommendations. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sticking around if you managed to make it all the way through. I know we did kind of ramble a little bit. Um, this is a decently long video. I will try to edit it so it shouldn't be quite as long as how long the actual footage is, but it's still going to be a hefty length. I feel like each video is getting longer and longer. I'm not really sure what to, why that is or what to do about that, but I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found something interesting, found something that you liked. And again, if you have any questions, comments, anything, feel free to either comment or DM me on Instagram. My DMs are always open. I'd love to hear from you, whatever you have to say. And yes, thank you for the uh, support that you have been giving me. If you're new here, thank you for watching. If you're a repeated viewer, thank you for coming back again. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all of that. If you want to. If you also want to share this video either on social media or share it with your friends, that would also be appreciated. But I will be knitting nonstop for a little bit and I will see you with hopefully a lot of progress next time. Bye bye.